Welcome back to the e-learning champion pod. The e-learning champions podcast from Comlab India. I'm Swapna, content manager at Comlab India, and I'll be your host for this podcast. We have been receiving amazing responses for our previous episodes. Thank you so much for your appreciation. Keeping that in mind, we are back with a new podcast today. Before we begin, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome again. This is the e-learning champion pod, your home to everything e-learning. Here, we discuss the ins and outs of e-learning, learning technologies, and e-learning trends around the corporate training landscape. Your success matters to us, and that's why we bring you what matters to you. Today, for a fourth podcast, we'll be talking about AI-enhanced learning across the employee life cycle. Fostering continuous employee learning throughout the employee journey is crucial. In the face of burnout challenges and the age of quiet quitting, are you seeking ways to empower and engage your workforce as they embark on 2024? Well, rest assured, you're not alone. In the last podcast, we saw how to use AI tools in design and development of learning. In today's episode, we'll take a step back and focus very specifically on AI-enhanced learning across the employee life cycle. You know, one question that training managers often ask is, how can they contribute to employee development throughout the career life cycle by delivering training that addresses the diverse needs and aspirations of employees at different stages in their careers? Well, to answer this burning question and to learn more about delivering learning across the employee life cycle, we have Shalini Merugu joining us back for this podcast. Shalini Merugu is the Director for Learning Solutions at Comlab India. She's a versatile learning design professional with 18 plus years of diverse experience in instructional design, learner and user assistance solutions, and designing and delivering customer training. She's very passionate about working with customers in developing performance enhancing learning experiences that achieve measurable business results. This includes analyzing customers' training needs, developing actionable roadmaps tailored to each client's unique requirements, and creative strategies to maximize learning. She leverages the strengths of various modalities to design effective rapid e-learning, blended solutions, and performance support materials. Shalini also conducts customer education workshops, both in-person and virtual globally. All that and still counting, she's got a great hand in this domain, and that is exactly why she's the best fit to talk on a topic like this. Welcome back, Shalini. It's great to have you again. Thank you, Swapna, and uh, thank you for that very generous and warm welcome. And a very warm right. welcome to all our listeners today. Right. And I really am looking forward uh, to spending the next few minutes talking about how, you know, uh, there's been so much of a buzz around the word AI, and it's just a matter of time before it really touches all aspects of our lives. Right. So where does AI come into the picture? And, uh, you know, how do we, how are we as an l and function involved with it? So that is going to be um, the topic for today. So let me give a quick overview of the employee life cycle. It starts with recruitment. And once the candidate joins the organization, we onboard them. That important phase, you know, where we make New hires feel welcome, orient them to the company's culture, policies, their department, their role, and give them resources to help them get familiar with their new organization and role. Then we have the employee development phase where the focus is on ongoing development of their skills so that they are equipped to do their job well. And this is the phase where typically LD plays the biggest role. But today we're going to also look at, you know, where are the other phases where LD can make a huge difference. So when it comes to the life cycle, once we go past the development phase, then we move on to the retention phase. So now the employees on board and doing well, 
And now our prime purpose as an organization is to make sure that they stay, that they are happy and fulfilled in their career. So performance management, talent management, employee engagement, all of these play a key role here. And finally, the offboarding, where if for whatever reason the employee decides to quit, the exit is smooth. Now, across all these different phases, of course, it's not just the employee who's involved. We as L&D also play a key role in supporting other stakeholders who are involved in this life cycle. And we will look at that shortly. Sure, true, Shalini. It helps you remember that we support various stakeholders across the employee life cycle, as you rightly said. So can you share some other aspects that we need to focus on throughout the employee life cycle? Yeah, sure, Swapna. Uh, I would like to give a broad framework to keep in mind <clears throat> even when we go through this employee life cycle, because this is a key framework which I believe I touched upon in the previous podcast as well, of which in which, uh, you know, we set the stage for employee development and the other phases in the life cycle by setting up a very robust ecosystem. And uh, I reference the Academy's framework from a McKinsey report, which touches upon every single aspect, all the various components that together successfully make up an ecosystem. And these are the various components that we need to be focusing on if we want to make sure that eventually we do roll out our training when that when we do roll out our training that they are successful. And of course, it starts with making sure that we are aligned with the business strategy of organizations. So if we don't know what the business wants, if we don't know what are the desired business outcomes, then we as a function can't really support them. And from the business outcomes flow the desired performance for every given role. And from there, we come up with performance driven learning objectives to bridge the gap. And uh, this really forms the foundation for all our learning initiatives. And this is where we can use AI tools to support us, even when it comes to, you know, coming up with performance driven learning objectives. The second thing for a healthy ecosystem is that the business units and HR co-own this prioritization of learning. So for the longest time ever, we were working in silos. Uh, HR and business units were uh, not really uh, talking together with l &D. But here's a great opportunity for us to bring together the business units and HR in our very initial conversations and make sure that both these stakeholders are equally invested in uh, terms of what we are doing through learning initiatives. The next thing to make sure is that we assess the current capability of our workforce, because unless we do this first piece of mapping of where learners currently are, we cannot take them to where they need to be. So this is an important part and it sets the stage for all that we design and develop later. Uh, so true. So that's an interesting take, Shalini, to take learners from where they are to where they need to be. You know, they have to be learning paths for them. So can you elaborate on this for our audience? It is important to craft learning pathways or design learning journeys. We did this manually in the past, and I'm sure a lot of us are still doing it manually because probably not all of us have access to AI-enabled platforms which can do this. But whatever be the main means we use, having well-designed learning journeys for the different roles in our organization for whom we are planning to roll out training is imperative. Now, these could be role-specific learning journeys, which also give learners the required visibility that they need into their learning roadmap. And this is where we, we can support them. The next thing is to start with the actual initiatives where we execute and scale up and do all this very efficiently. Now, another component of the system is measuring the impact on the business, which is what leadership and the business is really looking for. And if we got our first step right, if we were aligned with our business strategy and we have, have the required KPIs in place, then we can demonstrate the impact on the business. And the next component of the framework is that we need to be really integrated with HR very closely by working with them in supporting them in the HR agenda. Uh, I think if you recall the employee life cycle, the, in the recruitment part, really there's no role for the employee as such, uh, or rather with the candidate, but there is definitely an l &D role in training HR. For the recruitment process, what l and can do for our HR teams is to help train them on areas such as removing unconscious bias, to make sure that all candidates 
have a level playing field. Uh, this is just one example. Now coming to other components of the uh, framework, you have the 70 2010 model, which I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with. It's a framework that tells us how learners learn with 70% of learning happening on the job, 20% happening through social learning and 10% through formal training. So for us to have a robust ecosystem, you know, which eventually will support the employee throughout their employee life cycle, it's important that we focus not only on the 10% of the formal learning, but also integrate it with the 70% and the 20% of the social learning. Now, this is where AI again has a role to play. You know, as I mentioned earlier through the learning parts, it can pull out not just the firm formal learning components, but it can give great recommendations from the other 70% com other and the 20% as well. So these are the different components. And of course, the underlying piece that glues it all together is the technology, because without the technology platform, without our digital solutions, right. uh, all this wouldn't be possible. And right. as I mentioned earlier, with AI tools for design and development, it gives our learners access to richer and more diverse learning experiences. This is indeed a great framework, Shalini, the 70 20 10 model that you're talking about. You know, to keep in mind, as you rightly mentioned, they're all beautifully interconnected. So we need to look at them in a very holistic manner rather than just focusing on bits and pieces in isolation. True, true. And uh, not just the 70 20 10 model, uh, Sapna, I would say this entire, all these components that I've touched upon, you know, right. the various, uh, all of them do impact each other. And we, we all of us, we tend to, uh, you know, focus sometimes on a few ones to the exclusion of others. But I think what is required at the moment is to be more deliberate and intentional about ensuring that each component is given the adequate focus while also connecting the dots and seeing the big picture. And um, AI platforms help a great deal by helping us analyze data, spot learner trends, take corrective action where required, and so on. Right. And uh, now that we have a clear idea of the employee life cycle and the learning ecosystem that needs to be in place for LND to be a valued partner to the business, uh, can you tell us a bit about how can AI help in uh, this employee development? Sure. So let me begin with how AI-driven platforms can be leveraged powerfully across the employee life cycle. Uh, you know, now there are even pre-boarding chatbots that can answer questions and guide new hires when they are filling out forms as soon as they are uh, they join the company. Right. Uh, when it comes to employee development, these platforms enable us to use learner data in the best possible way for optimal learning and engagement. So based on employees' job profiles, career aspirations, trends in the way they learn, the kind of topics they go to, their interests, their learning preferences, these AI-driven platforms can create uh, personalized learning paths. And the other advantage of such platforms is that they can dynamically adjust what the learner should be taking in terms of the next training they need to be doing based on how the learners have fared you know, in the current training and also based on their engagement patterns. So this aspect of adaptive learning is something that is uh, really a very powerful mechanism to make sure that learners really do get what they need at their point of need. And AI does all the heavy lifting in all of this. Um, and then, you know, with AI, many platforms have virtual mentors and coaches. So coaching and mentoring is a huge part and it can really be a game changer in the sense of, um, you know, determining how successful your learning initiative can be by integrating this along with whatever other solutions we have on offer. So with AI-enabled platforms, we have virtual mentors and tutors. We also have AI chatbots, which respond to learners' questions. And some of these cha AI chatbots also have personas. So it's almost like you're interacting with a human. And uh, these are just some of the fantastic things that AI has enabled, really. Um, another thing is the gamified learning, uh, which is a huge thing now. It's always been a uh, something that, you know, law organizations had been wanting to implement, but now it's enabled even more powerfully by uh, these platforms. So AI can introduce gamification elements and learners can earn 
uh, they can see they progress through the learning and there's this friendly competition that can be set up through gamified learning. And then of course we have uh, AR and VR experiences, which are which are possible only through technology and uh, it's a highly immersive experience. So all of these together are some ways in which AI can help in uh, learning. Right. And uh, Shalini, upskilling and reskilling have been identified as the area of focus for 2024. And uh, if you recall, this was a trend even in 2023 as well. So can you talk right. about this in the context of you know employee life cycle? Right. So uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, LMB plays a huge role in supporting not just the employees, but the people who are supporting the employees typically the managers. So as I mentioned earlier, for recruitment, we have a big role to play in training HR. We have a role to play in training managers who would be the ones involved in the hiring as well, getting rid of bias and uh, DEI. These are some trainings that are very essential at this step. During the recruitment process and then for the onboarding, this is something that continues to be constantly in the limelight, especially because of the way the nature of work has changed with employees moving jobs every two to three years and new people coming in. So onboarding really is a critical component and uh, this is where we can really support new hires better. And the managers uh, have a key role to play because employees who feel a sense of belonging are likely to stay. And uh, I was reading some interesting stats about how employees make up their mind within the first three weeks, whether they want to stay or leave. So this is a very critical phase of the employee life cycle, and it's very important that we as an LND function support not just the employee, but also the managers right. to enable them in turn to support their teams. Uh, and then, of course, we have the retention part where after the uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I think I skipped the development part. The, ups, the development part is where we really uh, train our employees with the required skill sets to excel at their jobs. And this is the focus, as you mentioned, you know, the upskilling and reskilling part of it has been trending since 2023. And uh, as far as the next phase retention goes, there are a lot of factors that contribute to retention. So the question we need to ask ourselves is how are we able to support our business our HR, our business unit leaders, our managers in helping our employees gain the required uh, training, the required learning experiences and opportunities to learn and the required engagement. And uh, then, of course, we have the offboarding where there's a lot of valuable data that's available, which can also feed into l and So we can use this data to inform our decisions going forward. So one of the biggest things that makes an employee want to stay is the opportunity to learn and grow. And uh, I, I recall reading somewhere that 93% of organizations do make sure that you know they do give uh, opportunities. But I think we still have a lot to do here. And uh, the assess, you know, uh, underpinning everything, underpinning this entire employee life cycle is that we need to focus on more than just the employee part of it. So we have, when it comes to onboarding, of course, the focus is on the employee and as well as the managers who will be supporting them. And I won't spend too much time on this because we covered it in the previous podcast. But it's worth mentioning that blended learning continues to be one of the most popular formats for onboarding because it, because it combines the best of both the digital and the traditional approaches. And when designing the blend using AI tools, we can cater to a diverse learner base and direct learners to different formats based on the trends we can spot through AI. Right. You've beautifully covered the four phases, Shalini. And now I have a quick question here. Uh, what are some of the key future skills you know, that you have observed, which can be trending, or which you think have become significant in the last two, three years? 
Right. I think we uh, kind of touched on this in the last podcast and uh, it really is very interesting. And uh, I think uh, this is what is going to really uh, help us hone our focus on, uh, you know, where to where we need to equip our employees. So uh, I'm going to reference the Future of Jobs Report 2023 by the World Economic Forum. And according to that, you know, uh, the, the, these 10 skills on the rise can be bucketed into various categories. So under cognitive skills, we have creative thinking, analytical thinking. Under self-efficacy, we have curiosity, lifelong learning, which, which really is the key to survival and the key to success. And uh, we have resilience, flexibility, agility, and especially in the fast-paced, ever-changing environment we are in, these come to the forefront. And then we have management skills, technology skills, uh, AI and big data are top training priorities, with AI and big data being the number three priority for company training strategies all the way to 2027 and the number one priority for companies with more than 50,000 employees. So uh, it's not just, you know, in the context of uh, what uh, what are the skills that an individual and that we in L&D need, but it's globally across the board, regardless of uh, where we are, which domain we are and what role we do. And then we have skills to do with working with others, which is something required for systems thinking, so you work cross-functionally and not see things in a silo, but uh, as a whole. So these are some of the top skills on the rise. And it's worth stepping back and seeing what are the skills that I, as an l and professional, need to invest in, not just for my teams or my organization, but also for myself as a professional. Now, I'd like to just elaborate a little bit more on the uh, upskilling and reskilling, because you know once the onboarding is over, Upskilling is the key part, the the development yes. part. And and again, some staffing uh, stats for those who missed the last podcast. Uh, the same report says that 44% uh, of workers' core skills are expected to change in the next five years. So that's really something. If you think yes. of where we are today and where we will be in the next five years, the skills that we need to thrive then would probably look very different to uh, what we need at the moment. And of course, there's sometimes a trade mismatch between the demand and the supply. And uh, what has, you know, you know, really changed a lot of things is also emerging technologies like uh, AI have, they've reshaped the demands of the workforce. And that has an impact on how l &D rises to the occasion and rolls out training which meets these demands. And uh, there's a very skill-based approach to both hiring and employee reskilling, really. So for us to achieve the kind of transformation that we are looking for, for us to, uh, you know, transform the business, it's not only dependent on who we attract, but how we close the skill gaps and also make sure that we give them meaningful learning experiences throughout their employee uh, throughout their life cycle with the organization. Now, um, I've spoken a lot about, you know, the need for upskilling, reskilling. One interesting trend that, you know, we've seen um, also in our interactions with our customers is that wellness programs are an area of focus. Uh, I'd like to share an interesting statistics here. A 2022 global report from Gallup showed that only 33% of employees are thriving in their well-being. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, among the top 10 skills on the rise today, we have self-efficacy -effic skills, which are resilience, flexibility, adaptability, agility. So I think these also, in a way, tie up to these wellness programs that increasingly are being used by uh, corporates because of the nature of um, the stressful nature of work today. And this is where L&D also plays a big role in not just helping roll out programs for employees, but also equipping managers to be able to support their employees in their well-being initiatives. 
of course, there are all kinds of well-being HR initiatives also being undertaken. But when we partner with HR, we also tackle it from the, the training standpoint. And uh, uh, in the context of upskilling, reskilling, I'd like to mention assessments. I think uh, most of us are familiar with the forgetting curve where we know that it's so easy to lose the knowledge and skills that we've gained unless there is some opportunity to keep that learning alive and refreshed. So assessments are one way of making sure that we test our learners on an ongoing basis. And uh, the feedback that we give them really helps beat the forgetting curve. So micro assessments are another quick way to make sure that our employees don't lose the knowledge and skills that they've gained. And uh, in fact, we can use platforms such as QStream to roll these out. So you push out a micro challenge, you have a scenario based on which the learner responds, and then you give immediate feedback and also give explanations on why their choices are right or wrong. And uh, what is more, you know, there's also friendly competition with others. So this is one way in which yes. we also have learner engagement, which is very important throughout the employee life cycle, regardless of where they are in their in the in the which phase they are in. That was very informative, Shalini. The stats you mentioned were surprising and quite startling at the same time. So Shalini had mentioned manager training during the employee life cycle. Given the gig economy or the Gen Z entering the workforce or for our multi-generation workforce, equipping our managers with adequate training is equally important. Can you elaborate on that part? Sure, sure, Sapna. Uh, I'd like to again throw out another interesting statistic. Did you know that millennials will uh, leapfrog over Generation X and by 2025, they will make up a whopping 75% of the workforce? That's so given huge. that reality, there are a lot of areas in which you can really roll out manager essential trainings. Uh, here's something else that I read. Uh, I don't remember where exactly, but it said that 60% of new managers fail within their first 24 months. I think uh, we all have... Uh, experience that it's not that easy for first time managers to hit the ground running without adequate training and learning opportunities. So, oh, right. and, uh, you know, with more than half of new managers likely to be unsuccessful, the consequences of this will be felt all across the organization in almost every uh, area. So new managers are unprepared with the skills that are required to lead people. And, uh, we can help them, we can support them by having a plan, a training plan in place to enable them to do their uh, their role well. And one of the things in focus today really is training leaders, training managers in using LMA principles, leadership, management, accountability. And as you mentioned, Swapna, you know, with this multi-generation workforce, uh, yes. we actually really do live in such an interesting time where there are Five generations at work all, all, you know, working alongside. So how can we as an L&D function help? Well, you know, keeping in mind the demographics of each generation, when we are designing and developing our solutions, we can um, make sure that we engage people across the board. And then, you know, the coaching and mentoring, men, uh, mentoring which I mentioned earlier, they really are key to employee retention as well. And this is also where AI-driven design and development uh, really helps us engage with learners in a way that standard tools do not. So, um, so those are the areas where we as an L&D function can support managers. We can create various toolkits. We can provide guidance and resources during the recruiting and hiring process. We can work with HR to quickly onboard new hires. Um, we can manage and lead by being equipped ourselves first and foremost and helping our teams equip themselves. Uh, we can help in develop, employee development in identifying opportunities for uh, further learning <clears throat> and also during offboarding. Because as I mentioned earlier, valuable insights, uh, insights from uh, exit interviews can really inform our learning decisions going forward. And uh, another area where, you know, we can focus on for managers is that uh, many managers also have financial responsibilities and uh, we can equip them in these crucial areas. 
Right. So thank you so much for your inputs, Shalini. I'm sure our listeners found these useful. So before we wrap up, are there any concluding remarks you would like to make or a quick summary of what we as LND can do to support various employees, whether they are managers, non-managers, HRs or leaders across the employee life cycle? Right. So um, let me just sum up very briefly. We have the onboarding. We have the ups, the development, talent development part of it or the training where we train them during where we can train them, not just with the new skills that they need, but also train them for performance reviews. We can train employees through wellness programs and career progressions and uh, a road, give them a clear roadmap. And a lot of these are possible through AI enabled platforms, as I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, we are doing this even if we do not have access to AI driven platforms. And for managers, it's uh, leadership training, team building, performance management, communication training, conflict resolution, which are really the core things that we need to focus on. And as, and as for the organization as a whole, for the business, strategic planning is key. So is talent acquisition, developing leaders, and building and nurturing a continuous learning culture, and fostering employee well-being. So this is the kind of a broad roadmap which we professional l and professionals need to have in place when it comes to our own organizations. And a lot of it can be enabled by AI, which really dives into data, sees patterns, gives insights, and helps us to come up with actionable next steps. Uh, but that, that said, at the end of the day, it's a human who's handling this AI who can best take a call on what is really required. Yes. That's so beautifully you've covered it. You know, leveraging AI is something we all should look forward to. And thank you, Shalini, for the informative session. One thing that comes across is that using AI in learning and development ensures that employees continually acquire the skills and knowledge they need to excel in their roles. Right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Shalini, for taking the thank time you. out and speaking with us today. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's a pleasure. Looking forward yeah. to the next podcast and looking forward to having our listeners right. join us. Yes, I know I got a lot of it from it and from the insights and examples, the stats that you have shared. I'm sure our listeners did it as well. And we look forward to having you in the future again. Thank you, Shalini. Thank you. Yes, thank you all for listening to us so patiently and I hope it was beneficial for you too. To learn more about today's topic, delivering learning across the employee life cycle, visit our website. And if you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Leave a review or a comment wherever you listen a podcast from. We we'll love hearing from you. If you have feedback about this episode or would like to suggest a topic for a future episode, email us or visit the contact us page at comlabindia.com. Thank you for listening to the eLearning Champions podcast. I'll see you in the next one.